Hi, I'm Emily Antashek and this is Consider It Matt. Last month we used an interdisciplinary perspective to explore housing stability in North Carolina and this month we're going to use the same theme to explore another seemingly unrelated but very influential part of a child's success in school, safety. As we discussed last month, housing stability can impact a child's success in school and academic achievement and safety is no different. How safe a child feels at home and in school can impact their overall grades and test scores. This month's maps look at the intersection between school safety, measured as the rate per 1,000 students of criminal acts that schools are required to report to the state, and student achievement, measured as grade level proficiency according to test scores. These variables appear as the size and color of each data circle. If you look at the district map and hover over Transylvania schools, for example, you'll see a darker green circle indicating that a high proportion of students are grade level proficient relative to other districts across the state. The size is relatively large compared to other districts as well, meaning that there are more incidents in the Transylvania school system than in other districts statewide, but the color suggests that students are succeeding in spite of relatively high incidences. Overall, there's some variation in grade level proficiency or color of the circles at the district level, but there's less discernible variation in the rate of incidence or the size of circles. Adjusting the map to show individual schools captures variations within school districts and tells a different story. The map allows you to look at data for four different types of schools, and we'll start by filtering the map for traditional public schools only. The result is a map characterized by a lot of yellow-ish mid-sized circles indicating that the majority of schools have average levels of grade level proficiency and rates of criminal acts relative to all traditional public schools. For more about our interpretation of this map and the relationship between variables, please see the accompanying article. I originally created the school level map lumping all school types together, but I quickly realized that criminal acts in alternative and exceptional schools overshadow the acts in traditional and charter schools. Because the circle size changes based on the values for the other schools included in the map, when special designation schools are included, differences across traditional schools are difficult to see. As an outsider with limited knowledge of all of the school systems across North Carolina, I find it compelling, but not surprising, that there are higher rates of criminal acts and lower rates of student achievement in North Carolina's alternative education and exceptional children's schools. I'd like to hear more about this from experts on the topic, but my instinct is that these students that have been reassigned to these schools are dealing with more than just the typical academic and behavioral challenges. If these students are dealing with unstable home lives or overcoming other hurdles, I wonder if it's possible to bring experts from different fields to the table to find holistic solutions that benefit not only the students, but the communities where they live. If you're well versed on this topic or you have other thoughts you'd like to share, please reach out to us on ednc.org.